the fall of mankind was a problem. In the, it, in the instatement of a new counterfeit kingdom called the kingdom of darkness, very important statement in the Bible, it calls this kingdom that man fell into the kingdom of darkness. Everybody's the kingdom of darkness. Write the word darkness down. What does darkness mean? It means ignorance. Hebrew word there for ignorance. The Hebrew word is very important. The Greek word is also the same word as absence of knowledge. In other words, the kingdom of darkness is a domain in which a king rules by ignorance. Interesting. So who is the king of the kingdom of darkness? Obviously Satan. The Bible says that the satanic ruler of this world has blinded the minds of those lest they see the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Once again it says what? The God of this world has what? Blinded the minds. What's your mind? That's your source of knowledge. He blinds your minds. It never says he blinds your eyes. The ruler of this world blinds the minds of those lest they see the glorious gospel of the kingdom of God. So we got two kingdoms going on here. We got a ruler who rules by ignorance. We call it darkness. And we got a kingdom that rules by knowledge, which is light. And that is why Satan his greatest power is what you don't know. What you don't know is where he gets his strength from. The first thing, ready for this, that Satan attacked in the Garden of Eden was Eve's and Adam's knowledge. You want to hear it? The first thing God gave Adam to protect him was what? Information. He says, if you don't touch that tree, and you obey my commandments, you shall live. The day you eat from that tree, disobey my commandment, you will die. So what do they have? Information. They had knowledge. In chapter 3 of Genesis, Satan shows up. His first statement was, did God say? What is he talking about? Did you get information? Did God say? If you eat from this tree, you will surely die. And Eve responds, God did say. We did get information about the tree. Then Satan decides to attack the knowledge they had. He said, but God knows. Where did he get that from? He says, God told you that because God knows that if you eat from that tree, you won't surely die. You will become like him. They already were like him. His first attack was to doubt the knowledge you have. Is that deep? Very important. Satan's greatest attack against you is to doubt the knowledge you got from God. God says, you are healed by his strife. Satan says, but you still feel the pain. He, now, now you got two different information going on here. God says, you've been healed by his stripes 2,000 years ago. Satan said, but you feel the pain. Two informations coming into your bank of knowledge now. So now you got a decision to make whether to believe one information or the other information. And if you believe the pain part, then you are in the dark concerning the healed part. And this is why the kingdoms work against each other. The kingdom of darkness is to destroy you. The kingdom of light is to give you life. That's why you should walk in the light as he is in the light. What is light? Knowledge. The kingdom of darkness, therefore, gets its power from what you don't know. This is why I encourage you, everyone here, to keep reading, to keep studying, to attend every opportunity to learn. Every time I open the doors of this sanctuary and stand up here to speak, and every one of us began to open the word and preach to you. If I was you, I would attend every meeting. Do you know that I attend every meeting I get a chance to here myself? Even if, I, even if I'm not speaking, I want to be here. Why? Because the word of God constantly changes your darkness into light. Some of you miss great opportunities to come in on Sunday nights because you don't see the importance of it, so you decide to stay home, maybe do some other things, relax, whatever. But you see, if you understand the word of God and what it is, Satan hates the word of God. So he loves to lullaby you to a good rest on Sunday night. He gives you 10 different excuses why you can't come to get the word. On Friday nights, Satan gets all the thing all worked out. Why? No matter what you learn, if it's not the word of God, it doesn't destroy darkness. 
Thy word is light. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word. Word that comes from the mouth of God. It says, and Satan came immediately to steal the word. Now remember, Jesus made that statement concerning what? He says, uh, the power of the sower. The kingdom of God is like a man who goes into a field and he sows the seed out in the field. And the Bible says what? Some fall on stony ground, some fall on thin soil, some are choked by weeds, and some grow and become fruitful. Then he says, he says, but the birds came immediately and picked up the seed. As soon as he sows the seed, the birds came immediately, he says, and they picked up the seed. Then they asked him, Master, explain the parable to us. His first answer was, the sower sows the seed, and the bird is the evil one. Got the point? He said, before the seed even gets set in the soil, the evil one goes after the word. Please notice, he doesn't go after you. He comes immediately to steal the word. Why? Satan ain't afraid of you. If he's the ruler over darkness, then you ain't his fear. What's his fear? Light. <laughs> if his kingdom is darkness, his nightmare is light. Yes. And you are not light. You possess light when you possess the word. The entrance of your word, bring it light. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light. In other words, it's the word you need to keep getting, not fat on food. Satan is afraid of the word. He comes immediately to steal the word. So we got the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. We got the kingdom of revelation knowledge and the kingdom of ignorance. That's what we are fighting in. The Bible says you were born children of darkness. In other words, you were born stupid. Sorry. You were born ignorant. Until you meet God and start to learn his word, you are in darkness. That means if you went to college and got a PhD but don't know Jesus, you got a lot of dark information. You all hear me? You can have a PhD, DDD, five PhDs, but if you don't know God, you are educated in darkness. You are highly darkly educated. <laughs> the Pharisees had that problem. They were doctors of the law, the Bible says. They had doctor's degrees in the laws of their own learning. And the Bible says they were ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, it's popular to go to school. Some folks never graduate. You notice that? Some people got deep education. I mean, you run into a doctor who got a PhD in physiological studies in the body of man, and then he smokes cigarettes. That's always, that's always amazes me. A dentist eating candy. I mean, that amazes me. It amazes me. You can be totally educated in darkness and never see the light. That is why Jesus said to Nicodemus, who came at night, he was a doctor in the law of his day. She said, Nicodemus, you still must be born all over again because what you learn ain't no good. You know, it's kind of depressing for God to tell you you are a completely educated fool. That's what he's really saying about the kingdom of, 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 of darkness. Darkness is, is, is absence of the information from God. Look at Romans 12 too. Very important statement. It says, and Paul is speaking to believers. That's important to begin with. The book of Romans was written to the church at Rome. It's a powerful church that was raised up there. And Paul really loved this church. And Paul wrote them this note, this letter. And the letter is really about their redemptive uh, access to God. And in chapter 12, verse 1, it starts this way. I beseech ye, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, well-pleasing unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be no longer conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. Everybody say repent. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Who is he writing to? He is writing to Christians. That means believers, sons of God, who already had the Holy Spirit. But he says, you have not been changed. What's he talking about? He says, look, you can be saved, but not converted. 
Salvation takes place instantly. Conversion can take a lifetime. It's like moving from an old dilapidated house to a palace in one day. My God. All your bad habits come with you. Hello. You know, I heard a story, and this is a true story they say, here in the Bahamas, where a family moved from one of our islands years ago. It's an old, I'm not talking about your family. Uh, they moved from the islands, and they came to the capital island here in, the, in Nassau. And the story, when I heard the story, I said, now that is a graphic example of how the kingdom works. They came here, and all their life they used an outhouse toilet. An outhouse. So they came here, and they moved into a beautiful new home. That was an, it was an inheritance that it was left to them. And all their life they used an outhouse. When they came here, the story goes that they didn't know how to operate the new house. And when they used the toilet, they stood up on top of the toilet bowl and stooped down. You get a picture of this. It's graphic, isn't it? And they did that for months until somebody was visiting. <laughs> and the family that was visiting them was wondering, I, I saw your son, a little boy, in the toilet, a little kid. And they said, what is he doing? They said, why, what's the problem? And the, 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 the family member said, the, the kid is standing up on the bowl, stooping down on top of the toilet bowl. They said, so what? That's how we live in the kingdom. We live in the kingdom of God, but bring our old habits, our old mindset. So Paul is saying, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word transform is the, Hebrew, is the Greek word metamorphy. That means metamorphosis, which means to be a complete change. He's telling us that we haven't changed yet. To live in this kingdom, you need a complete revolution of mental state. You need to change the way you think. He says, by the way, the, the, the next verse is important. I'm not going to quote it up here, but it says, And then you will know what is God's good, acceptable, and perfect will. That's a powerful statement. He says, look, in order to capture God's perfect will for your life, you've got to change your thinking. Now, I think Paul wrote these three words because I think they're different levels. God's good will is God's goodwill. You know, someone give you goodwill. Goodwill simply means that they tolerate you. You know, they, they kind of put up with you. Acceptable means that could pass. And I think a lot of times God says, okay, I know you're in there, but that could pass. But the third one is God's perfect will. You are now exactly what God wanted. And the only way to get there, Paul says, is to have your mind transformed. Have your life transformed by what? Renewing the way you think. So the thinking brings a transformation. The two kingdoms, therefore, are completely opposite to each other. Jesus, therefore, came to introduce this kingdom, and that's why there was such a conflict with him. Let's talk about briefly how he introduced the kingdom.